Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is the expansion for the game Scythe, The Rise of Fenris. This is the third expansion in the Scythe trilogy and the last one. Scythe plays one to five players. There's a modular board as well as an expansion that increases that count from six to seven. And with this expansion here, you can switch between different factions and can also be played, I believe, one to seven as long as you have the base game, this expansion and the board modifier. Um, and it's going to just provide you with a full on legacy type campaign and modular type op options that you can play uh, and add or remove from the game mode. You do not have to have the other expansions to play this. There are rules indicating if you need the second expansion, et cetera, et cetera, the first expansion to play uh, with certain rule variants and whatnot, as well as the airships here. And some you will use and some you will not use, depending on the game mode. Um, but yeah, you're just going to open this up and you'll start. You'll go through from, from one aspect to the next, including new rules, new punch boards, new characters, as well as some new things that you'll see along the way that you haven't seen in the base game site. We'll talk about mainly this expansion. We'll do a semi-spoiler review. I'll try not to cover everything or exactly what everything does and how it works. So you'll have a little bit, but I feel like I want to give you everything that's going to be in here so that you know what you're getting when you pick up this expansion. It's the most expensive one and it probably, in my opinion, has the most to offer. So I want to let you know basically what you're going to get and how most of it kind of functions without revealing any storyline aspects or how it works in the storyline, what gets unrevealed and whatnot, but that you, you get a good understanding of everything. So we'll cover that. Okay, so here is all the components you're going to be getting with the Rise of Fenris. Uh, now, as you can see, there are two new factions. You're going to have Rasputin, which is going to be the Fenris faction, and you're going to have Vesna and Voltan, which is the Tesla faction. And each of them have their own unique models. So they're going to come with their mechs. An airship, if you have the airship expansion, will be included for both of them. All of the components that you will need, and of course the character miniature for the leader. You're going to get your player boards, as well as combat boards, and of course each faction is going to have some unique differences in comparison to the other players. Uh, in the box, what it's going to start off with is these little boxes here and a bunch of punch outs. And you're going to be getting this, this rule book here, which is also going to double as a campaign rule book. And it'll have from start to finish what you do and how you want to use this game. Uh, so if you want to go through the campaign mode and you don't want to have anything spoiled, then you've gone too far. You need to stop watching the video. And if you don't mind, then we'll continue. Uh, remember, I'll probably be discussing mainly the modules and what they do and what you're going to get for this expansion. But just as a side, there is a campaign. You go from start to finish, you open new things, find new things, and encounter different things as you progress, which eventually opens up a module and then another module and so on and so forth. But if you're like me and you didn't want to go through the full campaign because you weren't going to be able to play 10, 15 games of this to review it, you can pop everything out and try all the different modules the moment you get it if you don't care about the campaign, which just involves you opening everything up, going to the back of the book where it says modular rules, and then setting it all aside, putting it all together, and then checking to see where in the rule book you can find the rules for the module components. And you won't need anything else. You can go ahead and set aside all these guys here, as well as, of course, the main campaign aspect to the game. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the idea. Now, the game, as far as setup goes, the setup for the games are all pretty much the same. But because there's modular rules based on what you want, which we'll discuss during my, my review portion of this video, as well as... Um, uh, the characters have some unique twists and turns to them as well. Uh, I don't want really to really cover any setup for the game Scythe. I've already played this game on multiple occasions on streams and whatnot. If you want to check those out, I'll have a link down below in the description, or you can check out the Dice Tower video. It does a good job of explaining how to play the game Scythe and how to set it up. This review video is specifically covering the rise of Fenris. All right, let's go ahead and go over, and I'll review each of the different modules one by one. And the first one is going to be the mech mods. Basically, you're going to get a, a big punch out at some point in the campaign, and it's going to 
come with a bunch of these modifiers that change how your mechs function. On your player board, you'll have different mech spaces. When you take a mech off and utilize it, put it on a space where you have a worker, you're gonna gain the ability of the mech provided to you. Uh, with the mech mod expansion, it's gonna come with a ton of these guys here. These are gonna be new mech mods that will allow you to have a unique ability when you take the mech off of the location. These can be randomized. You can kind of set them aside how you want to do it. I mean, a lot of these mods are interchangeable as to how you'd like to play, which mods you'd like to add and whatnot, but theoretically, you're going to be getting mech mods that you'll place on top of your mech abilities on your character board. If this is your first time playing Scythe, I don't suggest you play with any of this stuff, by the way. Um, this is all for more experienced players who know the game well. But mech mods are just simply a modification to your main game board that allow you to include new rule changes to your mechs. Maybe you can, before combat, steal a random combat card from your opponent, um, put pontoons, uh, move. Uh, you may move to or from lake territories controlled uh, lakes are worth plus one territory at the end of the game so you can gain more victory points so there's a lot of variety in these mech mods before combat if you pay a power your opponent gets minus two power that's pr that's pretty useful as well stealth entrenched townships foothold sword all these different options here that you can utilize in the mech mods and mech mods are great uh there's something i probably wouldn't suggest using for the first few games. These are kind of like when you've kind of gotten burnt out on what you already currently have available to you, and then you wanna mix it up, and then you would include these guys. This is just a kind of why not more type of an expansion or slash modification. Um, I don't have much to say negative or positive about it. I mean, I like the addition of more stuff. It just gives more life to the game, and with these mods, you're going to have a long livelihood for the game. The next one is infrastructure mods. Infrastructure mods are one-time use abilities that you're going to be utilizing. You get one of these guys here and you can utilize them. They're superpowers. Basically, they make the game a little speedier. This one here is enlist. They reduce the cost of one enlist action uh, to zero food. Or perhaps propaganda. Negate up to two lost popularity from one action or encounter. Assembly line. This one here is a deploy action. Reduce the cost of one deploy action to zero metal. And so on and so forth. So these are just bonus abilities you can give to speed the game along. It's basically a super powered ability that once you utilize is gone and it's a nice way to make the game even quicker. Now Scythe is a pretty simple game, pretty straightforward. There's a lot to it and it seems very thick and complicated but uh, in general it's pretty easy taking an action on one of the four options, maybe five, and then pass. With these it just gives a little bit more of a speed boost to all players and each of the boosts are different in type which is also nice. So the mech mods and infrastructure mods are just light modifications to your already made game boards or of course uh, as a bonus action. Uh, then you have the triumph track. I'm just going to talk about all the tracks real quick uh, because why it's all kind of interchanged do you like fighting in scythe if you don't you choose the peace track you just take this and put this over the main scythe board this is where you'll have your victory objectives if you have six of them when you win the game or you end the game and in this case here there's just no fighting you don't have to worry about power you don't have to worry about fighting you can choose to fight you're just not going to get anything that's going to help end the game and score you victory points Oh wait, you like fighting? Great, there's a war tracker as well. This here is going to allow you to increase your power, attack up to four times, uh, drawing the battle cards. This is a full on war uh, like board. All that matters in this really is the war aspects. I mean, there's only four other ways you can place stars down, which is upgrading and you're putting your buildings either or. Uh, putting out all four of your mechs, which is also kind of like fighting. Then you have the enlist and doing one of your objectives. So if you want, you can do war or peace. Depending on who you're playing with, I would recommend using this. In fact, I do like this, actually. I want to play with my friend Josh. He likes to fight a lot, so the war. When I play with Callie and all my gal friends, they like playing the more Euro aspect to the game. Then we go for peace. Or if you want, you can mix it up. You can take one of each of these at random and place them down on the board to modify the uh, objectives. Maybe it could be a lot of fight and stuff like that. It's, it's all randomized. So instead of having it specific to war or peace or the main board, which is a little bit of everything, this is just a complete randomizer. And you could choose to do any of these three options or stick with the base one. Really, it's all fine. I don't have an opinion too much on them. I like them. They're good. They're not necessary but I think they work well with certain players. And if you know your playgroup, then you'll know which one to utilize. 
So then we have alliances. Uh, in the alliances mod, you're gonna get an alliance marker for your faction. And if you want, you can give that to somebody else. It's basically like, I'm gonna alliance with you. Okay, great, we'll swap. And when that happens, you'll gain victory points of the other player's point total, and you're gonna get their ability. In this case here, uh, if I gain the yellows, I would get, there's no limit to the number of stars I can place for combat and objectives. That's rather nice. And I'll get five points into the, the game. Only two players at a time, well, only one player can work with one other player. So in an odd number game, you cannot do alliances and you'll get some benefit. I believe it's like five victory points if you just happen to be the odd man out. Kind of gives me this uh, rising sun feel and I don't like it. Um, I do like alliances. If I'm playing with an even number of players, then I will include alliances because I don't mind it. It's just kind of a nice way to swap and work together and make it kind of a 2v2 or 3v3 or, or sorry, 2v2v2 or 2v2 or uh, two players were allied and two players aren't. And uh, there also is the interesting aspect of minus 10 points if a player breaks an alliance by attacking you that's supposed to be working with you. So if I happen to be working uh, with green here and green chooses to attack me, then green is going to lose 10 for taking my alliance chip. And so it provides some unique little twists and turns to it. I do like the alliances, but I'd never play it uh, five players or, or seven or three. It's only gonna be for me to play where you at least you have the option to ally with somebody or not, or to break that alliance. I think that's where it works really well and shines. And the fact that everybody has one and they're very different and they let you use special powers is a nice add-on as well. Uh, then we have the two factions, the Vesna faction and the Tesla faction. The Tesla faction allows you to kind of have, their, they have their own unique mech mods uh, that function on their own. And they have their own unique miniatures as well. Uh, it provides a new color, which is kind of this teal color. And the mechs are pretty cool as well. They're like robotic um, uh, walkers that move around. The ship is beautiful and the character is really nice as well. It is uh, similar to the other factions. Like I don't think you'd have too much, there's not too much complexity to it other than of course, they're kind of like mech mods. You're gonna have mech mods, but just specifically for you that you can kind of choose, which is nice. Um, and then the other faction is the Tesla faction. You can choose to play as either of these factions. And if you do, you'll simply swap out any unused space. So if, if players are playing with like red and I don't know, blue, you could choose any of the other spaces and place this marker on top of them to indicate that that's now your home world. So these markers are to indicate uh, spaces that you can go on the world provided that they're not already taken up. Uh, Tesla's a bit more complex. It utilizes very large miniatures. They're very like, they're, they're heavy. These are like the Star Wars walkers. They're really big ones. Um, he's like the evil bad guy in the scenario. And uh, you're gonna have these markers. These markers are gonna give you negative points at the end of the game. So if you hold them, it's not good for you, but you can also move them around and drop them on the field. When players uh, then walk onto them, they will take them. And the second thing you can use these guys for is teleportation. Uh, you can actually teleport from one, one area to another. I believe it's your home base to one of these areas here, get you farther out. But when you do that, you have to take the token back. So you don't want to keep these because it's going to cost you at the end of the game. There's a lot of variety with this faction and how it, how it works. Um, it's kind of aggressive faction, but it's also one that's not good for new players. Uh, then we have the, uh, we have Triumph Tiles. We have Mad Tesla. Uh, we have, oh, the, 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 these are the, these ones here. The, the Mad Tesla is the next one. This one is, can be used in a variety of ways. You can either A, give this to somebody who you think is new, I would suppose. I wouldn't do that. Um, what I would actually use the Mad Tesla for, the main mod for him, is you are going to be able to fight him and he could be another way to end the game. So it's a character that kind of moves around the game board and you can interact with him and fight him. Um, the other way is if you uh, obtain a certain number of encounters, the little tokens on the board, if you walk on th the third one, he will kind of just become yours. He'll be, he'll drop down onto that location and you'll get him. So either one of those is kind of cool where you can obtain him after you've acquired the necessary uh, ingredients, or if you want, you can battle him and that can be another way that the game ends. Either one is pretty cool. And he's typically just kind of used as a mech when it comes to being a player controlled piece. Uh, then there are the uh, two other things. You have the desolation. Desolation is, is, is this here, and along with these little trackers here. This provides a cooperative experience in the game. Now, I didn't get across to doing this one here, so I can't tell you a whole lot about it, other than if you'd like, you can include a cooperative uh, mode to the game, as well as there's also a multiplayer 
automata. You can play with multiple people. You can include automatas. Automatas are basically what you would use in a single player game. Now you can kind of include them together in a larger player game. Like I said, this plays up to seven players. So there's a lot of variety now that you can add. And when you have all this stuff here, now it just provides you with more mods to change the game around. My favorites are obviously the factions. I do like Fenris. I do like Tesla. It's hard to choose between the two. Um, all the factions kind of play a little differently, but these two specifically have very unique aspects to them. Uh, you have the really great miniatures from this one here. You uh, can use the different, I like this board here as well. It's not like, none of this is super needed for Scythe. It's not gonna change the game in a way that's gonna make it feel different than what Scythe is. Um, but there are some really cool aspects to it. Uh, my favorites are the factions. I like the Mad Tesla. I like to use this as a character that you have to defeat that can end the game. It just changes it. That's probably the most interesting, unique change to it is this can now end the game so you're not super worried about stars. You can focus on getting this guy down. And while you do so, you'll put stars down. As long as you have more than other players, you'll score more of those points. Um, and I also really like uh, the, these mods here, these infrastructure um, mods. These bonus abilities to just speed the game up a little bit more, providing you with some unique little... Uh, aspects to the game that will allow you to kind of do things for free and quicker. Anything that speeds the game up is going to be nice, especially in a larger player game. Um, my least favorites would probably be the alliances just because it rings too close to home for those those um, five, seven, and three player games where somebody just kind of gets left out. Um, I prefer not to use these. Um, I believe these are the triumph tiles that kind of change the way in which the board is going to function. I'd rather play War Piece or the regular. I think those are just fine, just enough as they are. Um, and I feel like the... Rasputin slash Fenris is going to be a very complicated character to play when you're a new player, so just be aware of that. But overall, this, this expansion provides the most as far as expansions go in the game Scythe. Now, I don't believe any of the expansions are needed for Scythe, but if you're a big Scythe fan and you like the mechanics and you like to see changes and additional factions and all that kind of stuff, then each of these expansions is a nice turn. Now, I have not played the Airship expansion. That's probably the next one I'm going to review and take a look at. Um, but remember, this one does come with airships for both of the expansions that are new, the factions that are new in here. But I do really like the two expansions I have played. I feel like if I were to choose one, the first one so far would be the five to six player, uh, or six to seven player one, as well as the larger game board. That's my favorite aspect of the game is the larger game board. So you can just see more. It's easier for people, especially newer players, to see where everything goes. But this one would be a, this one's really good too. Like, because I'm such a big Scythe fan, I would say these are auto pickups for me. Uh, they're, they're completely worth worth the value. Uh, they're completely worth the different modules. This will give you a forever games as well as the campaign to go through that if you have the time. But otherwise, if you're like me and you just want to pop these guys out, then you're going to be sold. And then of course, it's going to come with these as well. The factions and the points and the mods and all that. It gives you a new full on scoring sheet, which is great. Yes, so Scythe, the Rise of Fenris, beautiful components, great artwork. Everything is just Scythe, more Scythe, same quality as always uh, with a bunch of extra stuff that you can have. So yes, I highly recommend this. This is one I'm going to be keeping forever along with my copy of Scythe, which I will keep forever. And I highly recommend all this stuff if you want more Scythe. Thank you guys for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Scythe, The Rise of Fenris Expansion, the third in the trilogy and I believe the last one. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check out the Stonemaier Games website to pick up Scythe as well as any of the expansions that you would like. Got one more to cover, airships at some point, I'd like to do that. But so far, everything I have played is wonderful. And this one has the most modifications I have seen so far. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really, really digging this one. This will have a lot of playtime, especially now that I've gotten to try it all out, except for the desolation mode, the cooperative mode, because I like playing Scythe as a competitive game. But for those of you who want to add that, you know, unique twist, you can. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I, I'm excited to, to, to talk about more Scythe with you next time you see my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like, you can hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. If this is the second, third video you've watched of ours, maybe it's worth it. Maybe we've earned your subscription. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to dominating you next time.